Hey yo, we're back with a second episode here of Brian Coddington. We're on Cash on the Hood, and uh, you're listening to the podcast. Yep, the podcast, or you're watching the YouTube. Or you're watching the YouTube. Thank you're you for doing that. You're so, welcome. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so yeah, Brian uh, is our guy. So he likes it when I say, please like, share, subscribe. Please do. Like All if you're stuff. listening to us right now, like on your, your podcast app, which you should, um, just just hit the follow button. Like just hit the it's right there. Thank follow you. us. So you always get a new episode because I know you're you're probably get it like when's the next episode coming out? Here's the deal. You click the follow button, the minute an episode comes, boom, you got it. That's right. And it's it's on all the streaming platforms. All the streaming platforms. That's right. All How many streaming platforms are there? Way too many. Are we at past 40 <laughs> now? Or are we at hundreds? Oh, well, there, you got to figure, like, Apple Podcasts goes to, like, a bunch of different ones. So, like, if you use uh, uh, Castro or, um, you know, the uh, Overcast, they're all pulling from Apple Podcasts. So, like, we're literally in, in hundreds of platforms across the globe. So it, it behooves you to sign up with Libsyn. <laughs> if you're a potential podcaster? Yes. Yes, you should. Right. Well, I mean, this is what we left people off at the last one, like how to be a podcaster, how to get, how to start being, having it with a strategy. Okay. Right? So you're asking me how to do that? No, no. That's how we left off. Oh, the yeah. That's so what I'm kind of recapping. We got to recap. Yes. Yes. We did leave off on that. Right. So that we left off where you can contact Brian. Yeah. You can reach out to me. Right. And where's that? So in case this is the first All time right, hearing so, it. So the first thing here, one, you know, go to my podcast and listen to it. It's at show dot com. There you can hit the contact form and that goes to me. Like I'll be the one to get it. Um, or you can just find me like on LinkedIn, um, you, uh, Brian Coddington. There's only one, um, you know, and just, yeah, reach out to me and we can talk about podcasting. Mm-hmm. You're on TikTok as well. I'm on the, uh, well, my podcast is on the TikTok. Yes. And I call it the TikTok because I'm an elder millennial who barely understands how it works. But yeah, we're on there at, at Cinema Psycho Show. No, it's a good strategy. You always ask me to do it, and I haven't done it yet, which is <laughs> cut apart your YouTube and then drop that as clips yes. on your TikTok. Yeah. Yeah. It's it, it's a lot, though. Like, that's the thing. I know I've, I've asked you to do that, but the thing is, is like, it it is a lot to do. I don't do video with my podcast. Um, what I do is the lazy man strategy of I take an audio clip that I like a lot that mm-hmm. I think is funny and fairly short, like one to two minutes. And because I talk about movies, the benefit is I've got access to YouTube and can literally find all of the movie trailers mm-hmm. and clips of the, the movies up there. So I pull one of those down, marry it with my audio Ooh, as I bump the thing, um, marry it with my audio and... Yeah, that's pretty much it. And I put it up there on TikTok and it, it works. Like, that's the thing is I, I didn't think that would be a working strategy, but it actually does work. It's a lot of comments. I do. I do get a lot of comments. I get a lot of likes. I don't know what that means in the algorithm, but, you know, I, I, and it's something that I didn't think TikTok would be something that would would be something that people like um, for my podcast particularly, but it, it seems to work, you know. It does. It works. I think it works well. I think that that media marries well with the podcast. Media. If you do it like you do it. Yeah. Which is you're taking the movie and you're talking over it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and it's a thing where, you know, you hashtag it to the movie. And like I've done now a strategy where like at first I was just kind of taking like any random clips and just throwing them up there. Um, but now I have a strategy where an episode comes out. I put it one that's just the trailer. Right. I just take the trailer from the movie and I put it up there, you know, because the nice thing about TikTok that uh, unfortunately Instagram and YouTube don't really think is a thing is they don't really have like a time limit. Like I know they say it's like 30 minutes long, um, but like YouTube and Instagram, they cut you off at a minute, you know, and the thing is, is like for a conversation like what we're having, you know, sometimes you might go a minute, you might go two minutes, maybe go three minutes. So like there that's the nice thing about TikTok is that I can take a a pretty nice 2 minute long conversation and I can throw it up there or I can take the trailer from a movie and because I want to you know juice the audience to say hey guess what this new episode's coming out this week and you can listen to it it's coming out you know later this week here's the trailer for it and it'll prime the audience we can't really do that on Instagram we can't really do that on YouTube 
Um, so it's a nice thing that I think TikTok really lends itself to. It is. It works well for me for a short form, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, no, what you do is great because you just show off, like, the artwork you're making. You show off the derby that you're at. Um, I don't do a lot of me personally on the camera thing. So, I mean, I've done a couple. Though. I think I did one this week where I was like, hey, guys, we screwed up. <laughs> I didn't get an episode out last week. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, I, I don't do a whole lot of just me talking to the camera because that's, I don't know, that's just not what I think people want to see. Uh, I was nervous to jump on it. I mean, not really, but I was. Yeah. You know, because I did, I felt old. I'm you like, couldn't, why am I, couldn't why tell. am I holding my hand like right You here? couldn't tell. No, you, I mean, you got good, good on camera, uh, you know, personality that, that comes through. You don't feel like it, watching it as, as an audience, but I don't feel like you're nervous at all. Um, Me, I'd be cutting so much of myself down. It would just be jump cuts the whole time. Well, I have been trained. All right. So whenever I hit the road 12 years ago yeah. on tour, I was not prepared for public speaking. I thought, oh, I was a teacher. I know public speaking. It's different. Completely. Yeah. Completely different. So my very first time, I was full ahead of steam. I was in St. Louis. Excuse me. I was on my first stop of this 12-year tour. Yeah. And I had to follow the deputy mayor who was a Baptist minister. Oh, He could command a room. Yeah. And then next up, from out of town... Jason Sauer. <laughs> I'm like, that guy really likes Star Wars crickets. I'm like, thanks for having me. <laughs> Peace out. <laughs> so I failed. I've been failing for a long time. So I just jump up there and do my best. Be off the cuff, be who I am right off the bat. You know what I mean? Just and my phone is full of 30 second video. Yeah. So excuse me. So that's really that's why TikTok was made for me, because it's I really have thousands of 30 second. Well, I think the thing too is like just doing a podcast is going to enhance your ability to, to talk and do public speaking. Like I, I know for me, like I just, I, I mentioned in the last episode, I came back from, from podcast movement in Denver and I got to speak at that. And it was the first time that I one gone to that convention too, that I was speaking and I was speaking about audio editing and I was nervous as all hell before I went up. But it's something that the minute I got on the stage and the minute I got the microphone in my hand and I've got the clicker and I'm just like, oh, we're good. Nice. And I, I think that is, and I, even even my, my, my boss was, he's like, it seemed like you had been here for like 10 years, not that this was your first time. And I'm like, yeah, but it's like your nerves pump you up so yeah. that the minute you get on the stage and you're just like, boom, we're on, then it just kind of comes and it just we got this. I mean, yeah, I'd done prep and I'd like, you know, rehearsed it, but it was something that being in that moment, like you, it's just you and the microphone and you're there and you just go. Are you standing or sitting? I was standing. I, I don't do this. I, I think, and I was like, they gave me a option of a podium. They're like, do you want the podium? I'm like, no, no, no. I'll walk Yeah. on the stage. So like I was, you know, doing my back and forth thing. And using my hands because as people could tell on the YouTubes that I do this. Right. <laughs> I'm, I'm not Italian at all, <laughs> um, but, but I communicate a lot with my hands. So, you know, it gave me the freedom to do that. I don't like being stuck behind the podium I'm like, I'm not on the stage. So it, it's just one of those things that your nerves pump you up. You get to public speak and you're, you just go. And as long as you like know what you're talking about, you're not just like trying to be a phony and say, like, oh, yeah, I can talk about quantum physics. Never would. Um right. Then, then you're good, you well, know? You could probably talk about Quantum Leap. Uh, I got into that show a little bit, but not, like, to the depths <laughs> to be able to talk about it. No? Um, no. no. I'm sorry. That was my attempt. It's okay. Dad joke. It's cool. Uh, all right, so you were talking about how you use the stage and public speaking. Yeah. Now, I think I've seen you at a table before yeah. with other directors, like, was it Shiner? I'm not sure. Uh, back in those days when you guys were all working in the horror movies, you guys were doing like table appearances oh. on stage. You know. Oh yeah, I mean, well, we what, what's at that Chatham. Called? At Chatham, I think we we did a, a thing where I think you were there for that. Mm. We brought in Russ Streiner and John Russo, and I think I was like the MC for that thing. Um, yeah, I mean, doing any sort of convention and any sort of tabling thing where you're on a panel, um, it's it's a bit different because you don't really have command of the material it's more like you're reacting to it some people like that sort of thing 
Um, I don't dislike it, but I like kind of driving. That's mm-hmm. just me. I, I like to, to drive the conversation. And oftentimes, like, if you're finding out now, like, you know, we are, my response to your stuff is like, we're leading down another rabbit hole somewhere. Right. And like, that's kind of what a panel is for me. Like, you know, like, mm-hmm. it, and it's, it's fun because of two reasons. One, you get to talk about like what you're passionate about. Um, but two, you're exposed to other people because someone else who comes to that panel might just be there to talk, listen to them. And then they're exposed to you at the same time. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I was never really exposed to this panel style of, yeah. you know, presenting, you know, information. Like I'm used to like, there's one teacher yeah. in front of the room telling you what you need to learn, what, what you need to know for next time. Right. So in that environment, it was different for me. And as I'm on tour and learning about speaking in front of people, I'm just, every moment I see these things, I'm just absorbing it. I'm like, all right, this is how we become a public speaker, how we learn these things. So like when I'm on track shot live, there's this guy named fatty. We've had he, him on the show. Yeah. He has to run out there when the winner wins, you know what I mean? he's on track and like that is something, you know, that's not something you can do immediately. Right. You got to have some skill, some wit, and you got to know whether or not you can do that. Right. Like, so, so I naively went into this public speaking gig thinking it was easy <laughs> is what I'm trying to round this back right. up to is so it took a long time to get to where we are right now to feel comfortable with the camera and the microphone. Yeah. I was not a natural. I cannot remember lines. I can only do ad lib like i know i know my faults that's why podcasting works well for you right i can only just go off the top of my head i would never be able to re-say the same line right so i'm working with a reality show that feeds me lines yeah oh my god they're like say it again say it again. well that's a whole other ball of say wax it again there. that's I'm a like, whole other ball of wax because like I'll, I'll i pre-produce videos for libsyn and like when i'm filming myself i joke with with people i work with all the time like yeah you don't see the the cuts that I've had to make and how many times I've swore at the camera because I got the line wrong. And like for me, when you're filming yourself and it's for a YouTube video and you've got the script over here and you know you have to met you hit those lines. Cause for me, I, I can't ad lib those. I have to have it written out. And then I'm normally I'm the one who's writing the script. So it's written in my voice anyway. But that's something where, you know, I'll look at the script, look at the camera, say the line look at the script, look at the camera and rinse and repeat. But there are so many times that I screw that up and mm-hmm. I have to repeat the line over and over again. And it's over lines that like in your head, you're like, these aren't hard, but because you've got so much else going on in your brain at mm-hmm. that ter- current time, it's just too much. And you have to like, take a step back and be like, all right, what, what do I got to do here to get this dumb ass line? Right. <laughs> out? I used to uh, like, I had to train my brain to not obsess um, about the sentence I just said, because I'd be like, "Oh, that sounded terrible." And yeah, then, I mean, my well, mouth, my self-doubt. mouth's moving. Yeah, and I'm stumbling over the next thing. I'm just like, "You gotta keep moving," you know. So that's why when you were describing, I was asking specifically how you were on stage, is because if you, for me, if I'm gonna have lines, mm-hmm. so when I was doing Brandy and uh, Leech's wedding, I had lines, so I needed a podium because I knew right. This, I had lines, to, I had jokes written. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to make sure I knew. I mean, them. I did have a PowerPoint. So, oh, like, okay. that's the thing. I did have that. So, I knew where things were supposed to, like, come in at. Mm. And I had also done about two or three rehearsals of it, like, privately. You know, I had my wife and my daughter be the, 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 the audience. And that was also a very fun experience because, like, I'm talking about the nitty gritty of podcast editing and they're just like, <laughs> this is interesting. It sounds good, but it's like it's not interesting to them. Right. Um, but I mean, it, it's it's something that I think with those sorts of presentations, I don't obsess over what I'm what specific sentences I'm saying. It's more am I getting the the meat and potatoes out of what I want the audience to understand in that point in time and in that sentence. Mm-hmm. However it comes out is whatever it comes out. But that's I guess what you know, we're we're giving so much great information to yeah. podcasters and stuff, and so I'm really finding like small details that you can work on. Yeah, that you know, having a notebook with questions, 
having knowledge of who your guest is. Yeah. Um, those, I mean, they may seem trivial at the time, but like once you're eight minutes in and you're like struggling, you want to be, you want to know where like you're okay. There, so, th- that's also a reason why I don't do an interview show. I really don't. My podcast is not an interview show. We, 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 we talk about a topic, we talk about a movie. So for me, what I have to do is I have to watch the movie. Now, when we do have a guest, like we had Frizzy on, mm-hmm. what I do is I want to watch the movie, but two, read up on the guest. Exactly. You know, and then what way I've done it now, what's worked out well for my podcast is that I bring that guest on, not so much to talk to them about like, all right, what's your new thing going on? Because how many podcasts do that sort of thing? Um, it's, I want to get that guest perspective on the movie that we're watching because they have a whole other completely different viewpoint than myself and my co-host have. And that breeds a really rich conversation about topics that I couldn't have thought of. Mm -hmm. And then of course we leave the last like 15 minutes to be, Hey, pimp, whatever stuff you got going on. Makes sense. Did you send the movie or like, Hey, make sure you're watch this movie for you. Yeah. Yeah, we basically say like, "Hey, go go watch a movie." And with, with Frizzy, I felt bad because he had to spend thirty dollars to rent the blackening, <laughs> and we all had to do it too. We we're like, "Oh man, maybe they're really raking us over the coals." Wow. <laughs> they're trying to <laughs> review this movie. Um, Major Studios, if you're listening, you can send me <laughs> movie copies to review. Um, but yeah, like that's the thing is, we all kind of watch the movie ahead of time. We come to it and we just talk about the movie. That's. That's a smart way to uh, do a podcast, so you can you have something that is repeatable. Yeah, and it, that's that's from evolution of it. Like we started off just doing interviews with filmmakers, and that's great. But it, it ultimately becomes a thing where, like, an audience may not know who this specific independent filmmaker is who's trying to push their indie film, and you know, how do you get someone who's never heard of that filmmaker? to listen to an episode well you get a popular film that everybody is you know talking about or maybe just you know is a cult film that people know about and that has that name recognition but you get that particular filmmaker to kind of lend their voice lend their opinion so one you're introducing the audience to that filmmaker for an hour 40 minutes even and then at the end of it you're like hey i like this guy so much what has he got working on? What is he working on? Like we did that with Mark Cantu in his film, uh, Wolf Hollow. Mm-hmm. We brought him on and he was talking about a movie called Wolf Cop, which has a big cult following. I never heard of it. I and mean, I like literally asked him like, Hey Mark, you tell me a movie that is similar to Wolf Hollow that we could do a review on. And he suggested Wolf Cop. And I'm like, that's great. So, you know, you get people coming in who maybe don't know him, don't know Wolf Hollow, but they know Wolf Cops. They're listening to it for that. And then they're listening to his point of view on the film. That by the end of it, they're like, I want to know more about this, about Mark's movie. Because he talked about mm-hmm. a movie that I'm interested in for an hour. And it just, it's a win-win. That's smart. That's really, that's, that's a really smart podcast. Yeah. No, mine is inter- interview. Yours based. is interview. But you're, you're going to interview, you interview people who bring you stories. Right. That are really interesting. That are fantastic, interesting stories. You, uh, is there any stories you remember? Oh, you just remember the hot sauce and eggs. It's just all that this. one is. I think the best one. <laughs> <laughs> that one is the best one. That one's this. This guy, that still makes my stomach curdle every time you bring it up. <laughs> I, well, I mean, the the why I started it was I'm interested in entrepreneurs who made it. Yeah, you know what I mean, and. I'm also interested in art, and I'm almost also interested in demotion derby. But I think the real story there is how did they do it? What risks did they take? What challenges did they have to overcome? Because yeah. I think the audience, everyone wants to be a little better at what they're doing, a little better. Yeah. And maybe they'll be inspired by or. or yeah, I was going to say it's that's... an inspiring take. You know, you listen to people um, like, you know, Kelly O who Mm -hmm. talked about like what she had gone through and then, you know, her risks and taking to, to establish Kelly O's diner and grow it to what it is now. And the same thing with, 
Nick from Caliente Pizza and these people that are just like, hey, I had a dream and that's it, you know, and it's inspiring for someone who like they want to do their own thing. Right. Because you and I are entrepreneurs, so we want to know. I'm not making money yet. No. Well, <laughs> I got a lot of hands uh, and a lot of things I do, but none of it's making money aside from like the day job. That's about it. But yeah, you're right. Yeah. Well, I mean, and, and you know, it's, it's inspiring because it's America and it's capitalism and like you want to be your own boss. And yeah. I do like, I'm passionate about being my own boss. Yeah. And uh, so I thought, boy, wouldn't it be cool? Cause I get to meet these people in so many certain yeah. occasions. I'm like, man, I hope in Pittsburgh wants to hear your story. So, I mean, it's not just Pittsburgh, the whole world. Like, that's the thing is like, you know, your podcast is worldwide. You get listeners from other countries who tune in. That's Amazing to me. Yeah. My, my wife is always amazed by that. Yeah. There are people out there that don't even know you that are outside of Pittsburgh that listen to your podcast on a regular basis. That's cool. I'm happy that yeah. you're in charge of all that information. <laughs> That's cool. Um, so normally we have uh, Stephen Sickles here or our, or our guest host, Todd Sayopa. Yeah. But um, so this uh, week we are unable to do that. I had a couple other Guest plan. So you and I have always known that we've had a podcast in our back pocket. I, I told you, like, when you met, texted me the other day, you're like, hey, I don't got these guests. They're going to have to reschedule. I'm like, well, I mean, I'm here. <laughs> you throw me in front of the camera. I'm good. Right. And I knew that. Uh, so as far as notes going, I've always had a running list of notes for this podcast. Okay, between, good. You know I'm glad. Mean? Right. Because like, cause we've talked about it since the very beginning. You're like, when do I get to be on the front of the camera and I'm like, I got you. Oh, I got yeah. you. I got you. But starting this podcast, I felt like I always do. Like I got to tattoo my friends. Like mm -hmm. I got to start with them first before I can get going out into right. the room. So I really asked my friends to just hold on and let me give them a podcast tattoo. And <laughs> <laughs> like, I hope you guys are okay with this. Yeah. So, um, that, that's what I knew the whole time. What I'm trying to get at what the notes I remembered is like, you're a professional in this space. Yeah. And so it would behoove us to let the listeners know how, if they're interested, mm -hmm. to really be strategized. What is podcasting to you? Because, like, we've heard it, and that's where everybody hears it, and it's my fear. How many is it before you quit? Uh, the number goes anywhere from, like, three to five. Right? I thought it was up to 20. Oh, it could be. I mean, it could be 20. I mean, I, I'd say for newbies... Three to five is when they they start like tail, trailing off. Like you may be like winning, going like I'm going to do this every week, and then three to five happens. You're just like I, I can't do this. Maybe maybe once a month, maybe maybe once every quarter, right? Maybe never. So it's, I mean, it's, it's a tough. It, it's, it's a tough. tough. It's a tough market. Like you come in hot and heavy, thinking this is what it's going to be. Yeah. And uh, as soon as you said twenty, I went ahead and just rented out. Yeah. For the next four months, I'm like, I got this. I'm not quitting. Yeah. So, no. No. And you've you've been someone who you know, as as taken it and run with it. Like that's the thing is you you just like with everything you do, you you know, you take the advice that that people give you, and you just like, all right, yeah, let's run with it. Let's see what happens. Well, I sand a lot of drywall and I mow a lot of grass, and <laughs> I'm telling you, my body's sore, and I want a new way to enjoy my life as I can foresee. Right. So I foresee this effort because I'm always traveling. Like right. I'm going somewhere new every weekend. Yeah. So I know that eventually this might turn into a travel <laughs> show because of just how much I am out and about. Right. But till then I like this and I like this format. I like talking to guests who are knowledgeable and are helpful because I'm a helpful person. I want everyone to succeed. Right. You know what I mean? So, I know that having you here is going to be a re-listen for a lot of people mm -hmm. because they're going to want that strategy yeah. on their podcast. So I already know that coming into this. Cool. Right? Yeah. I mean, we're here because, like, we're talking outside when we're taking breaks. We're talking about, like, networking at yep. major conventions. Yep. Like, we have an identity and something unique at Cash on the Hood that is just a hair different. This is Scotia. And that's all you need. Just to be enough, you know what I mean? And then with your knowledge and expertise and your uh, 284 episodes, like, you know, that's yeah. pretty, it's pretty amazing that we, you know, we can pull this together 
every month. And uh, are we going to pay competitive talking later? Oh, we can. We can do competitive <laughs> talking later. <laughs> That's always one of our favorite ones. So that competitive talking has really just turned into a third it's, it's episode. It's become a third episode. It's not, I, think we, I think competitive talking came about because we had, you know, the, the most wanted fine art uh, the, car club. The car club. And it's like, uh, how can we get all these people? That was the worst episode to edit, by the way. That was the worst one to edit. It was fun though. Wait, it was wait, fun. Wait, it was very fun. We had eight fun. microphones for that. We had one. eight microphones, which, which I think we we tested this the 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 limits of what the Studio Me's uh, new space did with mm-hmm. that one. That was that yeah. was insane. They were they were thankful. They are very thankful, but that's when I told them like, "Hey, eight is the limit. You can't go over that, right?" So uh, we're in the smaller space where we first started. Yes. Yeah. So this is the two person, three person space. Yep. And then they have a bigger room, which is just down the hall. Yep. And uh, so again, thank you, Studio Me here in East Liberty is where yep. we film at. And uh, Brian Cinema Psycho Show podcast YouTube. Tell me where you can find us. Let's let's take it out. All right, you can find uh, my podcast, the Cinema Psycho Show, at cinemapsychoshow dot com. You can also find us on all the podcast platforms, no matter where you are. We are there. Uh, search for Cinema Psycho Show, click the follow button, listen to us. We got 284, or probably by the time this comes out, way more than that, um, episodes. Uh, there's something there for everybody. Thank you. Please like, share, follow, subscribe, all that. Yep. Yep.